Third old question, Baroness Cox. My Lord, I beg leave to ask the question standing in my name on the order paper. My Lords, the UK Government believes that violence against any person because of their religion uh, or belief is unacceptable. In Nigeria, attacks by terrorists and criminal gangs, as well as localised community violence, are having an unacceptable impact on people's lives. We regularly raise our concerns, including the impact violence is having on different faith and non-faith groups with Nigeria's ministers, uh, state governors and security professionals. Through the UK-Nigeria Security and Defence Partnership, uh, we're committed to supporting Nigeria to improve security across the country and to protect human rights. I thank the noble or the minister for his very principled reply. But may I ask if he's aware that according to inter-society, 4,020 Christians have been killed by militant Islamists, with over 2,000 abductions between January and October this year alone, as well as, according to Open Doors, 3,500 killed last year, and many Muslims have also been killed. And then I've visited Nigeria many times, including twice this year, and I've seen the mass graves of civilians, the burnt villages, and met survivors who described the atrocities perpetrated by the militants. May I therefore ask the noble Lord the Minister if His Majesty's Government will make representations to the Nigerian Government to call perpetrators of violence to account and to protect its civilians from the escalating massacres and abductions. Yeah. 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 Noble Baroness is absolutely right. It's a grim picture uh, with atrocities being committed on a, in a far too regular uh, basis. And, and of course, we, we continue to encourage the Nigerian government to take urgent action to protect people at risk, to bring perpetrators to justice, and to implement long-term solutions that address the causes of violence. And most recently, the British High Commissioner for Nigeria raised our concerns about violence with the with all the main presidential candidates ahead of the 2023 elections. Our High Commissioner uh, works very closely with state governors, local community, faith leaders, NGOs, and so on to address these issues, including through our work with the Nigeria Governors Forum. In January, the Minister for Africa raised our concerns with Nigeria's Vice President during his visit here, um, and she also raised the various security challenges that Nigeria is facing with Nigeria's National Security Advisor General Monguno in February at our Security and Defense Partnership. The former Prime Minister as well raised the issue during his meeting with President Buhari in Chogham in June. My Lord, the, Lord, the Minister has mentioned the uh, Security and Defence Partnership twice in his responses. Can he tell us, uh, bearing in mind this has resulted in police advisers being deployed from the UK to uh, Nigeria, as well as wider support for community policing, can he tell us, has the FCDO made an assessment of how that is working? And have they made any commitment to it continuing? My, my Lords, we refreshed our uh, security and defence partnership with Nigeria in February this year, and we committed to uh, work together to respond to shared threats such as serious and organised crime uh, and terrorism, and to support Nigeria to tackle its own domestic security challenges. And our support is very wide-ranging now, a reflection of improvements that we brought to the partnership. It includes training, mentoring, advice on tackling serious and organised crime, countering terrorism, reforming and strengthening civil policing, uh, improving capacity to prevent and respond to kidnappings, which is an increasing occurrence, and complying with international human rights law. Does the noble lord the minister agree that the situation in northern Nigeria, poverty, malnutrition, perceived absence of government, potentially creates the opportunity for terror terrorist groups with the potential wide effect of that? This is a region on which DFID, when it, is, it existed, focused. Can he tell, tell the House what used to be spent in terms of the programme in northern Nigeria in 2020? and what it is now. Yeah, yeah. No Baroness is right to, to highlight the problems in northeast Nigeria where extremist groups uh, and the ongoing conflict are having a massive impact on communities. These terrorist organizations are set on undermining the right to freedom of religion or belief by attacking uh, those of all faiths who do not subscribe to their limited extremist uh, views. And we are taking a coordinated approach to supporting Nigeria and its neighbors to address both the causes and impact of that conflict, and that involves political and defence engagement, humanitarian development and counter-terrorism support, and stabilisation and mediation assistance. I don't have figures from uh, the time of DFID, but I can, well, they can overlap. Over the last five years, the UK has provided uh, £425 million in humanitarian aid to northeast Nigeria, and we believe that's reached around 1.5 million uh, vulnerable people. 
14-year-old girl, Leah Sharibu, was abducted by Boko Haram. She was forcibly taken, she was impregnated and raped, and she has never been returned to her family. As recently as last week, the Nigerian High Commissioner, speaking here in your Lordship's house, said that she is still alive. Can the noble Lord tell us, as he's just referred to kidnappings and abductions, <coughs> when we last raised Leah's case with the Nigerians, what is happening to the Chibok girls and what more can be done to secure their release? The, the, the case the Noble Lord mentions is really a truly um, <coughs> devastating and um, um, grotesque uh, in so many respects. And, and of course, we have and continue to condemn as Islamic State West Africa for that abduction, for the ongoing uh, captivity of Leia Sharibu. We've raised her case with the Nigerian government on numerous occasions. I can't tell them exactly when the last time was, but I will ask the Minister for Africa. And we have called for her release and the release of everyone held by terrorist groups in Nigeria. The problem, as the Noble Lord knows, is kidnappings are occurring frequently across Nigeria. And they're carried out by criminal gangs, violent extremist organizations who are indiscriminate in the treatment they meet out to those they capture. And, and needless to say, the UK condemns all such activities and we're doing everything we can to help the Nigerian police force uh, cope with and tackle this growing problem. My Lord, my noble friend, the, minister. the minister refers to upholding international human rights standards. Uh, there is increasing concern, as has been raised, about the treatment of women and girls. So, therefore, will he reassure the House that he will uh, go back to the Nigerian government and raise this issue of the treatment of women and girls and also the discrimination faced by lesbians, gay men, bisexuals and trans people who indeed face the death penalty? The, the figures... Uh, uh, are, are truly horrifying. I mean, it, it, a, a, an estimated 1.3 million people uh, were in need of services to prevent and respond to gender-based violence in just Borno, Adamawa, and Yobe states, and that was last year. I mean, really staggering numbers. 82% of those people are women and girls. So sexual violence and exploitation are, 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 are a serious problem across Nigeria, but particularly in those regions. The UK uh, delivered sexual exploitation and abuse training to the Nigerian army the year before last uh, and last year to ensure gender perspectives are taken into account during security operations. The Conflict Security and Stability Fund, the CSSF, has also supported community-led reporting structures which give women a place to report sexual harassment and violence and seek support. And over the past five years, the SCDO Nigeria humanitarian funding has provided over 590,000 people with access to services that can help protect them from conflict-related sexual violence. Could my noble friend... Oh, up to you. My, my Lord, will the noble Lord, the Minister, agree that when violence and atrocities take place in the name of religion, it is the leaders of that religion that should be the foremost, first and foremost, in condemning those atrocities. Would the Minister further agree that an uh, opportunity was lost at the recent Freedom of Religion and Belief conference ho hosted by the UK of getting a binding commitment from <coughs> religious leaders to that effect? The, the, the Noble Lord is right, of course, that, that, that leaders of all um, the great religions need to take every opportunity to condemn violence in the name of their religions. Uh, there's, there's obviously, re religious belief, and indeed non-belief, is a, a driver for attacks by terrorist groups, um, mostly in, in northeast Nigeria. Christian communities in particular are targeted by groups, as are Muslim communities who do not subscribe to a particular narrow and extremist point of view. Uh, religious identity can be a factor, of course, in intercommunal violence, but the causes for these attacks go further than that. They're complex, and they frequently relate to competition over resources, uh, historical grievances, and sometimes just base criminality. Uh, my lords, can my noble friend, the minister, my lords, uh, my lords, uh, my lords, uh, my lords, uh, can my noble friend, the minister, uh, uh, enlighten us or tell us about some of the work that the government is doing with uh, local but also international uh, civil society organisations, particularly those that focus on interfaith initiatives and anti radicalisation <coughs> The, the, uh, uh, the SCDO uh, a base in, in Nigeria um, works f frequently through religious organizations in Nigeria, but also civil society. Uh, on, on a very wide range of issues, uh, countering uh, violence against women and girls, uh, promoting uh, media freedom, and doing what we can to undermine those 
uh, uh, organizations that are behind some of the atrocities that we've been talking about in this exchange today. This is very much a focus of our work. How are we measuring the impact of this 425 million spent on humanitarian assistance alone? Because listening to, uh, uh, to noble lords on all sides of the House this afternoon and drawing one's, on one's own experience, there seems to be very, very little benefit actually accruing to the people of Nigeria. Here, here. Here, here. There's no doubt that, that Nigeria is a deeply, deeply uh, troubled country for all the reasons that we've been talking about today. It's also been a big recipient of ODA. But, but it is possible to measure the impact of the investments that we've made. We, our assessment is that, and, and it's already been cited, we've provided £140 million in bilateral ODA since 2021 to Nigeria. Our estimate is that we've supported over 2 million Nigerians to improve their incomes or jobs sustainably since 2015. Education in 11 states are reaching over 8 million children since 2009, and over 1.5 million additional girls accessing schooling in six states as a result of our funding since 2012. In fact, there are many other areas where we have measurable success as a consequence of our support.